Somalia has been mired in conflict against al-Shabaab for 15 years now with no clear end in sight. Rather, al-Shabaab's deepened its penetration into Somali society. In order to end the suffering of the Somali people, a change must be made. Al-Shabaab's a movement that emerged in, in the mid-2000s in, in Somalia and really emerged out of the context of, of conflict already. There was, uh, at the time in the mid-2000s, an, an invasion from the Ethiopian side in order to dislodge this Islamic courts union that, that had taken power in, in, in Somalia. And Al-Shabaab really emerged as sort of the resistance to that invasion. And because of that, there was a lot of popular support for the movement at the time. They were viewed in some ways as, as, as freedom fighters and in pushing back against an unpopular invasion. Now, a lot has happened since then. Al-Shabaab terrorists stormed an African Union peacekeeping base in Somalia. Wednesday, militant group Al-Shabaab has claimed responsibility, saying that they were targeting... Al-Shabaab militants who carried out another deadly and brazen bus attack. Anisum was created in 2007 by the African Union. We've had a, a peacekeeping mission in the African Union. Um, which was AMISOM, now Atmos Force, come into Somalia, um, which really became the key vehicle to push back against al-Shabaab and made some significant successes. You know, the space we have in Somalia today is, is because of that mission. But I think since then there's a bit of a status quo and, and things have kind of slowed down a bit. And at the same time you've had al-Shabaab really make some significant adjustments during this period. They're a very adaptable actor. And, and honestly, often one step ahead of their adversaries. So I think many people uh, agree at this point that a military defeat of al-Shabaab is very unlikely. And that does lead to the idea that eventually there would be some sort of negotiated settlement. And so even though I think there is a strong sentiment in, in Somali society about finding ways to, to resolve this war, there are varying levels of uh, concern if you were to go down a path towards engagement with al-Shabaab. It's a very controversial and, and politically delicate topic. So even within Somalia, you have communities that have fought al-Shabaab actively. Uh, and, and, and would be concerned about that. You have obviously different uh, diversity within uh, the religious spectrum in, in Somalia and the clan spectrum as well. And, and so navigating that would be quite tricky, but then you zoom out a little bit to the region. You know, Al-Shabaab is a transnational actor. It has attacked Kenya on multiple times. It's, it's attempted attacks in Ethiopia, you know, elsewhere in the region, Uganda, Djibouti. And, and so approaching this topic is, is very delicate in that sense. Um, because the region and, and, and some countries in the region will, will be threatened by the idea that you can actually engage this group that has been attacking them. And there would need to be a degree of engagement with the region to understand where they're coming from and, and if, they're, if their uh, interests can be uh, dealt with or, or addressed through some sort of process. Um, because there's the risk of, of going further down this route without having the wider you know, region or even beyond on board, then, then I think it, it, there's a risk of undermining any, any sort of outreach. Mohamud has returned to the nation's top office after defeating the incumbent leader, Mohamed Abdullahi Mohamed. Crisis Group is recommending um, some steps that a new government can take to shift the ground in order to prepare for eventual dialogue. And so there's two streams here that we focused on in the, in the report. You know, one is that um, some s outreach should be conducted to the movement at the highest levels to sort of take stock on, on where they, they sit on, on this dynamic. And the second area is there are some small measures, trust building or confidence building measures a new government could undertake that sort of shift the environment a little bit. And, you know, one of these is perhaps, you know, how a new government messages about Shabab. Do they come in and say, we're going to defeat you, uh, you know, in, in a couple years? Or do they come in and say, look, you know, the conflict is ongoing, you know, we're not going to stop, you know, the, the, the military track, but we also understand there are some wider grievances or some issues here. We have to figure out a way around that. My country needs to work forward and not go backward. And it doesn't need violence and revenge. Whatever was done to people, we call for forgiveness. 
Dialogue is not a panacea, and it very well might fail in the Somali context. And we're not saying here to pause the military efforts or to pause uh, other efforts to degrade al-Shabaab's capabilities, including around its financing and its recruitment. But what we are saying here is that there's a gap between pursuing a military track and eventually getting to some negotiated settlement of the conflict. And that's where we think you need to add some sort of political track in order to get towards dialogue.